Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Code, I am Penge, and welcome back to Crossroads Inn, and of course welcome back to the Tankard and Teapot, where last time out it was very involved last time, an awful lot of stuff happened, and I think it went more or less in this order. So I think it went money laundering, torture, murder, and betrayal. I think that kind of sums it up. So let's start with the money laundering. We had to do some money laundering for the Guild of Bones. Trovin wanted the Guild of Bones out of the way. We went to them and said, hey, look, this guy wants you out of the way. Why not just pay your taxes? That'd be a good idea. And he will leave you alone. So they agreed to do that. But in return, we had to do some money laundering for them. So we got some stuff in. We've got this sort of gilded water in. We had to buy this gilded water at a very, very ludicrous price. But we got it in. We put it on the shelves. They paid their taxes and Trovin was very happy and then Trovin then sort of went okay fine yeah I'm not going to bother you anymore you've dealt with all the different factions well done you I'm going to stick around the inn for a bit we then saw an evil side of Martin so this is where the torture bit came in so we had to accommodate a pirate which is a little bit obscure but the pirate then took care of Trovin and by took care of him I think now it doesn't it didn't explicitly say that this had happened but the plan from Martin who suddenly became quite nasty indeed. And the plan from Martin was to cut out Trovin's tongue and then, uh, I don't know, sort of sell him off into slavery or something like that, down a mine or something. Was I can't remember now. But essentially turn him into a slave without his tongue so we could never talk because that was kind of where his power was. He was a sort of very persuasive sort of uh, little snidey man. So without his tongue, he would have no power. So that covers the money laundering. And that covers the torture. Then there was the murder. And the murder was terrible. It was a murder most horrid because the murdered person was Martin. It was Uncle Martin. So somebody came in and killed him as he was going out to get water from the well or something like that. And it was all very heartbreaking and he died. And it was all so very sad. So then we had a wake and the Baron was here and the Baron was by my side. And he was saying, oh yes, don't worry. I will help you, my liege. I shall support you. And la-di-da-di-da. -di -da. And then just as we were going to do a toast... I'd done some sort of inspiring speech just as that was going to happen and I was going to have a toast and drink my wine. Somebody at the bar broke down and started crying and then we asked them why and they said the Baron had told them to poison our wine and that was the same way that other people in our family had died as well. So it all became sort of apparent that the Baron was the baddie which was no great surprise, I'll be honest, because as soon as he appeared, it was a little bit suspicious. But yes, the Baron was the baddie, and he's escaped. So the Baron has now ran off. Now, that little bit of footage that we did have went very odd. These sort of cutscenes do go a little bit strange sometimes. The start cutscene went a bit weird. So, um, yeah, looking back on it, the Baron did get away. He managed to escape. So he's out there, and he's probably still after us. So then we've had to side with a faction. So we uh, had a little look at all the factions. They all came in. We had a chat with some of them. And we've decided to go for the Sears, simply because we helped them before and they helped us end the war, which is obviously a good thing because no war is good because that means people aren't being killed to death. And um, yeah, we sort of, I think they've got all the knowledge and the power and the information. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing for them to have. So we can do things using all the sort of power and knowledge that we've got. We don't have to rush in with swords. We don't have to do sort of silly things. We can make nice reasonable sort of reasoned judgments on things using information. So we have gone for the Sears. And now we've got to do all sorts of stuff here. So partner up with the Sears. He says, welcome the Sears to your inn and together form a plan to defeat the Baron. With their knowledge, power and influence, nothing will stand in your way. Well, okay, right, we'll see about that. But okay, <laughs> not many things will stand in your way. And this is where it starts getting quite tricky indeed. Um, accommodate the Sears, five of them. So I imagine we need five rooms for the Sears. That's going to be very expensive. Those rooms are not cheap to put together and the Sears are going to want really fancy pants rooms. Uh, create a trade route between your inn and the Sears Academy, uh, which is on Rin Island between Untermark and Sambria. So we'll have to look at that. Get the favour of the nobles up to 50%. That's quite a lot. Uh, gather a lot of rumours, a little bit vague, but okay, some rumours, and fulfil at least some of the Sears demands. This looks quite tricky. Now, I thought we were in the end game. I thought as soon as the Baron was revealed as the big villain, <laughs> we had the sort of the big Scooby-Doo moment of dun, dun, dun. I would have got away with it if it wasn't, I don't know, for you pesky kids kind of thing. Then um, I thought this was going to be the end, but no, we've got all this other stuff to do. So um, that's going to be really hard to do, accommodating the Sears. Building five extra private rooms is going to be very expensive. So we're going to need to save up some money. So I think we might just need to run the game on for a bit just to acquire some money. Um, let's have a look at where this place is, though. The Sears Academy on Rin Island. 
Okay, where is Rin Island? Ah, it's there. Okay, so we can't do anything with it right now. We can't do trade routes and things. I think we might need to start working down here. So let's get Aurelia on our side. So let's go over here. Uh, we'll select Town Crier. Who can we choose? Anyone that doesn't send those guys our way? That would be quite nice. Um, okay, they want drink. That's fine. We'll send them there. 330 monies. So we'll get a Town Crier to yell about us there. That ups our influence there. And then we can do the same here at the Sears Academy. Which, weird enough, the Sears Academy is full of <laughs> is full of the distress. But okay, that's fine. Um, okay, let's get the three of you in then. Because that brings more people in, so more money. So okay, and they just want drink. So Gareth, there you go, Gareth, go and yell about us. So I'll get those two down there looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Also, we might need to look on here and see if we can go and grab some fancy food and drink that the nobles are going to like. So let's have a little look. What are the nobles going to want? Blood Village. What do they have on offer? Cheese soup. I know, that's, that's for the commoners. We want something that the, the fancy people are going to like. Oh, see, we can't get all these things. Um, yeah, like Happy Village. Oh, that just looks like bacon and eggs. That just looks like bacon and eggs, which is very nice. That doesn't look like something nobles would have. That definitely doesn't look like something nobles would have. Um, hang on a minute. It is something. Oh, no, no, that's the townsfolk. Um, it might be worth going to grab anyway. Fish and potatoes. The poor man's rich man's food. <laughs> it's just, just fish and potatoes. Okay. Um, that one we can't do. Let's get a town crier over there as well. Um, let's just... Oh, three of them. That'll do. There we go. What about that? That looks kind of posh. Oh, we can't do that either. Um, okay, that'll do. Just uh, spend some money on some town criers. Okay, so we can't go and grab too many food items at the minute. That's a bit of a shame. What can we go and get? Can we pick up that item? Can we go and pick that up? A fancy bed too. Fancy bed, fit for a king, fit for anyone who wants to feel like a king. Okay. Um, Eduardo, your time is now. Ah, look. Look, that's actually quite good. Nobles will want to come and stay here. Okay, right. So you go and get that. And can we get somebody else to go and pick that up? A blue tapestry, that is also good for nobles. So Bertram, go and pick that up. Okay, that's good. Now we are going to have to do something else here as well. Because what is this crowd here for? <laughs> What you're here for? Oh, you're all looking at the picture of Martin and feeling all melancholy. Okay, that's absolutely fine. You you carry on. Carry on doing that. Um, We need to replace Martin because Martin was pretty much a, a full-time innkeeper. That was his job. He was on the innkeeping duties and I think he did a bit of cleaning possibly. So we need to get somebody else in to do all that stuff. So um, yeah, we need to get another person in. Let's just check if anybody's leveled up as well. Um, I can't remember if we looked last time or not. Have you leveled up? No, so you're level 12, so you must have started on level 10 or whatever. Um, you, uh, did we do you? I think we might have leveled you up, possibly. Um, you, no, and Marissa, I think, started high up anyway. No, okay, so we can't level anybody up. A few people are close to leveling up. Um, okay, let's see if we can find ourselves someone here. So, Lowry or Tegwen? Uh, Tegwen is a greedy, lazy person. Brilliant. Yep. Good CV. Whereas Lowry is a smart, speedy person. Hmm. <laughs> Which one should we choose? Um, Should we unlock a trait for you? Let's unlock one of your traits. Uh, you're also a bit chaotic. Okay, right. So you're sort of erratic and all the place. That's fine. We will hire you. And then you, your job, Lowry, when we go into your skills, um, you can do innkeeping, yes, gossiping low, everything. In fact, you can do Room services, medium. Waiting tables and cleaning. Oh, no. Turn gossip off. Low cleaning. Um, a lot of people in the comments keep saying you need everybody to be gossiping. But if they're stood there gossiping, they're not doing the work. <laughs> so what we're going to do is let's put speed up. We'll do that. And how about we get you in? I know you're a bit rubbish, Tegwin. But we'll get you in. So, okay. And then Tegwin, wherever you are. Tegwin. Tegwin. Did, did we hire Tegwin? Uh, where are you? There you are. Ah, you're, I, th I thought you'd appear at the bottom of the list, but clearly not. Um, your job can be full-time gossip and maybe a small bit of cleaning and don't do anything else. So you can go and gossip and you can get many, many scrolls. That can be your job. And uh, focus on speed, absolutely, because it doesn't really matter. I'm not too bothered. So there you go. Right, so we've got somebody that is gossiping. We've got somebody doing innkeeping. So this is all quite encouraging. So hopefully things should tick over quite nicely. Um, on the menu, did we want to put that silly Gilderbones drink on the menu. Oh, what are we out of? Mustard. Oh, hang on. Are these are things that we've not added to the menu. I was a bit, what? Um, hang on. How about we have this? 
Let's put a cup of water blessed by the Gilder Bones onto the menu because we might as well try and sell it because we've got loads of it in stock. <laughs> it's just sitting there. So let's go and get ourselves, I don't know, let's put it at 40. There we go. So please drink this. Essentially, it's just water. It's just some water. But, but there you go. Please have the water. Right. Is there anything else that we can add to the menu that the nobles are going to like? Is there something that we can put on here that nobles are really going to love? That's townsfolk. Uh, that is not. That's not. That's not nobles. That's nobody. So nobody's particularly bothered by hash browns. Meatballs is a, is a favourite dish from the nobles. Okay. That's very interesting. So meatballs, the only one so far. And eggs poached in a sauce. But um, yeah, we have no hot spice. That was quite hard to come by. How about meatballs? We must be able to get some pork. Ah, is that what pork looks like? Ah, now somebody in the comments was saying about pork. We need pork to make the outside um, smokehouse thing that makes sausages function. But I didn't know pork looked like that. It's got the kind of rind on it. Okay, so pork and mushrooms and onions. Okay, let's add that to the menu. Let's put that on the menu. And because it's for nobles, they'll probably pay a lot of money. So let's put it on 130. So then we need to go and find ourselves, even though we're a little bit shy of monies, um, some pork and some mushrooms. I think that could be very handy indeed. Now the job now is finding where pork and mushrooms are. Well, there's mushrooms just there. So we could always go, how about Butcher Bill? Butcher Bill, can we please look at this for mushrooms? 100 average price and you're charging 86. Okay, so we'll get some mushrooms from here and there's pork over there in Ore and it's really expensive. Oh my goodness me. Okay, right. Let's buy, I don't know, five lots of that 896. That's very expensive. Uh, let's haggle that down a bit and then possibly haggle it down again. So yeah, so we save 300 monies. That is quite a good saving. That's really expensive. So there we go. So we'll order the pork in. Okay, and we know that RA now is able to sell us some pork because yeah, it's down here, look, it's just here. Okay, right, that's a good thing. So we've got those ingredients on the way. I think now we just move time on and hope that the money just rolls in. We need new people to start. We need that food stuff to arrive. Then we can start attracting more nobles. That might get them more interested, 9.7%. Also, we do need to redo the decor a little bit redo the decor and put some more sort of uh, stuff suitable to nobles around the place. And I think we are going to go and grab some noble stuff, aren't we? So we could put some beds in. We could get ourselves some of those um, those tapestries on the walls and all that kind of stuff. So what are we on now? 10%. So it's increasing. Oh, and it's gone down to 9.3%. Yay. Okay. Okay. Ah, but that's because the town criers will be attracting lots of the distressed folks coming in. Okay. That's quite good though. At least they're bringing people in. So yeah, that'll come down initially. But we'll soon start targeting nobles, I think. That's the plan, anyway. I've just noticed that over here in this little settlement called, what is it called? Salbrit, uh, there is a painting. There is a painting that the nobles like. So we've sent someone over to grab that, even though we don't necessarily have a path to go to it. We've sent one of the people out to go and grab it, because that could be quite handy as well. Um, also, we sent somebody out to go and grab some lemon cake. So, uh, yeah, we'll pay up to learn the recipe. It's 200 guldens every time. I don't know why it doesn't say yes. It's auto accept all of those purchases, please, because you know what it's going to be like. And... Our imbalance of, of sort of uh, patrons is an odd sort of mix because at the moment we've got quite a lot of, of these guys. The travellers are coming in. There's a lot of travellers in. And then we've got more outlaws. So travellers, outlaws. And then it's quite even between the uh, the nobles and whoever you guys are, the townsfolk. And then, and then yeah, the distressed are right at the end there. But yeah, we've got a lot of you guys. 42.3% of travellers. I wonder if there is something specific i mean the start of this room here is is to those guys is to the townsfolk so what we'll do is when we've saved a bit of money we will get rid of some of the artwork like we discussed uh, some of these sort of uh, ornaments and things and i would also like to replace the um the bench here the sort of counter i'd love to get this thing replaced with the big fancy one because you can buy a gigantic counter i'd like to get one of those in as well but i think they were quite expensive how expensive were they let's have a look uh that one would be good a your veil counter two and a half thousand of your monies yeah it's quite a it's quite a big investment also it's quite a big thing as well. It's sort of a very big, very big structure. Um, but I would like to get one of those in. I don't really like the idea of the Untermarkian one, but it does seem to be... Oh, no, okay, right, hang on a minute. Hang on, they're all different. So that one is marginally different. So the Untermarkian one is 
Uh, it gets tidy, it gets tidy, it gets dirty slightly slower, but it's not as fancy. Whereas the Yorvale one is very much fancier. So it raises the aesthetic of everything, which is good. And it's fast. It's faster than the other one by quite some way. But yeah, it's not quite as durable and it gets dirty quicker. Okay, now I guess that's because that's made of wood and that one looks like it might have made of some sort of marble. So, okay, yeah, that's obviously you can wipe marble down. Harder to wipe wood down. Okay, that's good. I would like to get this in. <laughs> I just don't quite know how we're going to do it. Because um, we need to get rid of the old counter and the old counter is going to be full of stuff, isn't it? So that might be quite a tricky thing to put in. Uh, but yeah, we need to put in other stuff as well that, that the nobles are going to love. But again, we need money for that. We need lots and lots of money. So let's just run the game on. And I'll, I'll just keep an eye on things. Things just tick over until we've probably got, what, at least 10 grand possibly? That would be quite nice. Also, let us do this with the soil. And uh, has that been fertilized no oh yeah that looks like it might have been i think this land here is not fertile whereas that land is i'm not entirely sure aha and what is that the pork has arrived now and look look have you just made some sausages oh that is brilliant we have made some sausages and they're making more sausages this is a wonderful thing okay right this is good news. They are making sausages. The only thing is, the pork we also wouldn't mind using for the um for the meatball dish. That could be quite handy as well. Um, hang on a minute. Can we add can we add pork onto the thing at the bottom? That'd be really handy if we could see what's going on with that. That would be quite useful. Oh, is that one of the sears? There's a little conversational thing there. Hello, greetings, innkeeper. Do you have a bed to rent you here? Well, weird enough, yes, I do. I have one room left. I have a spare room. It's where Trovin was. <laughs> so I might have to modify it a little bit. But yes, okay, so turn around to see who's speaking. Samuela, Samuela is my name, says the person. By their apparel, you realise it must be one of the nobles. Oh, okay. I mean, that's good. We want the nobles in here. 15.3% at the moment, could do with a bit more. Um, okay, I'll see what I can do, you say, and shrug your arms, going back to clean the bottles. Nobles are always welcome in my inn, you answer, and welcome the guests. Well, we want to curry favour with the nobles, so yes, we will do that. All right, I'm going to stay here for a while, answers Samuela, and if you'd like me to stay longer, just rent me a room. Okay, so now you would like a room. I imagine the room we've got is probably not going to be suitable to you. So empty. Yeah, it's it's not noble suitable, your room. Um, okay, the thing is, what do you do in that room? What are you going to do? If we rent you a room, do you just pay us a nice regular sort of fee? So this room here it is, we could do with just making this a little bit fancy. At the moment, it's in the style of, of whichever one that was. Which one is that? Your veil, possibly? So maybe, maybe, let's go in here. Let's Let's change this around, shall we? Let's make this a noble's room. So let's sell that, let's sell that, we'll sell that, we'll sell that, and we'll sell that. Now, can we put in, can we put in the fancy bed? <gasps> we might be able to put in the fancy bed. All right, hang on a minute, let's find that. Um, there, 1,300, um, and that is for the nobles. Oh yeah, that could be quite good. Let's sell the regular bed. So bye-bye regular bed. We'll move that thing out of the way for now. Let's invest in one of these. Okay, this could be very exciting. And the thing is... Yeah, they can get in both sides of the beds, I'm fairly certain. Do you know, why don't we just put it there? And then they can get into either side. Okay, so bed. We'll put the little thingamabob, the little sort of night potty or whatever it is, over there. So that's fine. And we'll just sort of, we'll just tuck it next to the bed. There we go. So we've got that in. And then they might want a little bit of decor. They might want a fancy thing. So how about a green tapestry? A slightly fancier green tapestry. A slightly fancier blue tapestry. Okay, let's put a tapestry. Um, well, let's put the blue one. The bed is blue. So let's put the tapestry just there. Okay, and they're quite cheap. 150, that's, that's quite reasonable. So how is that looking now? It's in no particular style, the Ore room. Um, we'll call it the... The noble room. Let's change it round a bit. The noble room. It has very little in terms of quality. <laughs> That's not very encouraging, is it? They're not going to want to stay there. Um, okay, what can we put in here that the nobles are going to like? We could invest in one of those landscape paintings. I think that might be a good idea. So we'll put a landscape painting down. They're quite expensive. And then I think what we'll do is we'll move that over to there. And then I think, can we grab ourselves... Um, I was going to put the, the dresser or a mirror in, but that's more for townsfolk 
rather than for nobles. Okay, do the nobles want another particular sort of thing? Um, a classy chest? Ah, okay. Yeah, that could be quite good. Can that tuck into that space where that one is now? So move that out of the way and then grab ourselves a classy one of those. I don't know what makes it classy. <laughs> it's just it's like, it's like a wooden box. It's much like any other wooden box, but okay. Right, drop that in like that. Move that maybe into the corner as much as we can put it into the corner and then put that next to it like so. Okay, and then we can sell that for a bit of money back. Okay, is there anything else that the nobles like? They love a hunting trophy to the nobles. Okay, well, we'll put a hunting trophy on the wall for 300. We can afford that. So now, if we go back to here, how is this room perceived now? Yes, it is suitable for you noble folk. Okay, right, you. Hello. Do you want the fancy room? Uh, which one was it? The noble room. There we go. Would you like the noble room? That would be great if you could have that. There you go. Now, I assume that you're just going to pay us money for this because other people have tasks to do. So, for example, you, Golden Vico, you go downstairs and you play music down here and everyone loves it and I guess they buy more drink or whatever. And the adventurers go out on quests and all that kind of stuff. Calisthenics here is part of the actual storyline. So what do you do apart from just be rich here? I'm not entirely sure, but maybe that gets that higher up or something. I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. Do you know what we could do, though? We don't really do a lot with our adventurers. I don't really find them to be particularly useful. I'm, I, that bit of the game doesn't really... <laughs> I don't know if it just doesn't work properly. So let's say we can go to here. Lady in Distress. So, and then it's not appeared on Lady in Distress. It's, it's come up as Hidden Treasure. Yeah, see, already that's confused me. Because it says there, Lady in Distress in a Tower. And you go to here and it says Hidden Treasure. <laughs> I don't really understand. We've got a chap called Oberon. I mean, could we send him away to go and do some of this? Charisma 5... An endurance four. Yeah, he's going to struggle with that. Do you know what? Let's send him on that. Let's get reports from that quest. Oberon, go and deal with the quest because you're in one of our rooms. And if we don't do anything with Oberon, if we just sort of forget about him, because I don't really do that much on the quest, then maybe we'll just boot out the adventurers and then just get one of the seers in. Okay, I think we need to get ourselves some more servants, which is a bit silly, really, because we have an awful lot of staff, but there are a lot of comments popping up saying any service and all that kind of stuff, and other people are complaining about cleanliness. So I think what we'll do is we'll get a couple of extra people in and we'll set somebody to just clean. That can be their job. I think we've already got one person that does that. So we'll get another person. So I do notice here we have Reich the housekeeper, she could be very, very useful. What are her skills? She's dull. Okay, not too bothered, but she's a workaholic. Let's unlock another trait. We've got lots and lots of blue scrolls. So you are also persuasive. Hire this worker if you want to make more money, more money than usual. I think we hire you, Reich, or Reiki, however you spell it. So we'll hire you and you can go and wait the tables because you'll be very, very quick. So that could be quite good. And then we want to get somebody to do some cleaning. Who is that going to be? Branwen is is gloomy, sly, smart and tough. Okay. Um, you are a coward. You're a slow person. Yeah, we don't want you. You're slow. You are cheerful, a coward, drunk, and greedy. Okay, let's get Branwen, shall we? <laughs> let's get Branwen, because at least you're not lazy and whatever you were, drunk and greedy or whatever. So we'll get you in as well. So two more people, please. I just realised that Riker, who we just hired, will be our highest paid member of staff, I believe, by quite some distance. Okay, fine. You should hopefully make a big difference to things. So less cleaning, lots of waiting tables, don't do any room services at all. Do low gossip and do low innkeeping. So you just do the waiting of the tables. In fact, let's put medium innkeeping on. And go quickly, please. Go very, very quickly. And then um, who is the other person that we just got? Branwen. There we go. So you, Branwen. Cleaning, yes. Um, gossip, you can put low. Everything else, no. Nothing else. Lots of cleaning. Little bit of gossiping. That is it. And you can be just be, just do it very quickly. Just do lots of cleaning very, very fast, please. Okay, I'm just having a little look at the Sears Academy. It says, located on the beautiful and secluded Rin Island, it's the monumental academy where the Sears are educated. After finishing her studies, a Seer is sent to the home of an influential person to become their advisor. And we have a lot of these blue scrolls. I'm just thinking maybe we just spend some of them just to get our influence up here to, I don't know, to mid-level? I'm not entirely sure, but it'd be good. We've got 60 of them. We've got quite a lot. So let's spend, I don't know, another two. There we go. 
So that's as much as we can do. We've still got 50 of them remaining. We've got an awful lot of them remaining, but that might now mean um, that we can, in the Sears Academy, go over and start this trade route now. So we could use 50 of our, blue, uh, of our green scroll, sorry, which we don't have, or 1,250. I think let's go for that. So let's say 1,250. Oh, and look at that. Has that opened up some sort of sea trading routes? Oh, look, we can get things by a boat. Okay, all ah, right, that's very intriguing. Um, and that's opened up Kerbal. We can get an item from there. That looks like some sort of fancy kind of vase or something. Oh, that's very good. Oh, it's opened up these things down here. Oh, we need to get influence all over these places. Um, Gambetta has a fancy bed. That's got a fancy rug. We need lots of fancy pants items to make the nobles want to come to us. So yeah, let's see if we can get any more lovely items. We might need to spend some more money on doing all this sort of influential stuff. Um, yeah, oh, that's looking pretty good though. That's looking very good up there. Can we get a trade route with them for 1,250? Yeah, go on, let's do that. And that opens up some more. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff. I can't even see what some of those things are. Well, what is that? Oh, that's another sort of stag head thing. Ah, they might like that. And that is a, what's that? Like a candelabra type thing? Okay, fine. That looks nice, I suppose, I guess. Um, okay, and then we want to go, there's another bed over there as well. So yeah, we want to kind of get in with these guys over here as well. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, can we get a trade route with these for 1,200? Yeah, the last one, I think. Yes, we'll do that. Oh, and that's opened up all these. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so then we can try and go over there. Um, okay, right, I'd like to get down here if we could. I'd like to get that vase thing. Um, can we get anywhere around here? Happy Village? Is there any items? Are there any items we can just go and grab right now? No, I don't believe there are. I don't think there are any items that we can grab. So we need to go and get more influence with these places. And um, we'll do that shortly. I think we need to save a bit of money. We need to save a bit of money because we need to buy some uh, town cries and they cost a little bit. If we put one into lots of places, that could be a couple of thousand monies. So uh, yeah, what we'll do is uh, move time on nice and fast. Ooh, and we've completed one of the bits. Yes, we've created a trade route and we've got one of the Sears in. Ah, that posh person who claimed to be a noble must also be one of the Sears. Ah, okay, good. So we have one Sears in as well. Not really getting the favour of the nobles though, are we? That is not working at all well. Okay, there's another seer just here. They would like a room. So the same chap thing came up as before with the same options. Um, this one is called Eva, I believe. And we don't have a room for her right now, but I thought we do the conversational bit and then she might stick around with the key thing above her head. And then when we get a room built, we can just very easily go, there you go, there's a room for you. But I noticed there are quite a lot of seer type people around. You look like you might be a seer. You definitely are. There's somebody else. You look like you could be a seer as well. So yeah, there's all sorts of seer-like people around so I'm guessing I'm guessing that as soon as we get one into a room then another conversational bit will appear and it will say oh I'd like a room now so I guess we just have to work our way through and um, also the vedettas are not doing anything so do you know what you go and do some seducing please that might make us some easy money there we go if you I feel you want to tell me something could you whisper it in my ear oh you you sly dog okay so what are we on the nobles now 9.3 yeah, that is not working well, is it? That's not working well at all. However, Golden Vico, Golden Vico, yeah, you're a, you're a traveller bard. We could do with not a traveller bard. We could do with a bard that is uh, good for the nobles. So I wonder if even such a thing exists. Hello, who are you? Greetings, innkeeper. Do you have a bed? Freya is your name. Nobles are welcome. Okay. Uh, ne <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag name two or always welcome in my inn. I answer somewhat weirdly <laughs> to a confused look and welcome the guests. Okay, so we are slowly getting these people in that need rooms. We just now no longer have the rooms. <laughs> we just don't have the rooms or the money to build the rooms, which is the, a bit of a problem. I completely forgot that we sent Oberon away to do a thing. Oberon has arrived at the place of the mission. He was overwhelmed by the obstacle, bribable guards, and he got injured. And he's given up and is returning to the inn. I'm not really the biggest fan of the adventurers in this game. They always seem to just be a little bit kind of rubbish and useless. So what we'll do is, um, I think Oberon is in that room, isn't he? Let's boot him out because he doesn't really do anything for us anyway. Um, this room is set, oh, it's in the set in the sort of Untermark style. So I think we'll change this 
to a noble's room as well. We'll change this to a noble room and then at least the seers can come in so we can get another seer on board. So yeah, we'll have to go through and just go into here. We'll sell lots of stuff. We'll try and sort of deck out a bit like this one. There we go. So this room has now been transformed into one for nobles and we'll call it the lovely room. So there we go. So we've got the lovely room. So now we need to go and find one of those people that wanted to go into it. I think you are one of them. Eva, there we go. So we'll put you into that room. So would you like to go into the lovely room? Yes, you would. Of course you would. Right, there we go. Marvellous. And what we might have to do is we might have to boot out Golden Vico. Now I don't know which one of the um which one of the bars will come in and be good for nobles but um but yeah we've got look at that we've got almost 50% of a particular class in but it's not the right one it's the it's the travelers we don't really want them in we don't really want them in we want more nobles we want this to be a sort of a nicer place so um yeah we might have to look at that so i guess i mean do bards and that come in whilst um whilst there's already a bard here do they bother to come round? I think you're an adventure, aren't you? Um, no, that's... No, no, I'm, oh, I'm clicking on the ghost people again. You, just there. Yeah, you're Gala the adventurer. So we don't necessarily care about giving you a room. Who are you? You're Hannah. You're one of the seers. Oh, there's other seers around the place as well that we haven't spoken to. Okay, that's interesting. Um, And then we've got you... You look like a possible adventurer as well. But, of course, it's saying it's just a bed. I know, but the, the Kobe, whatever he's called, is in it. Yeah, okay, he was he was a rubbish adventurer as well. Okay, so I think what we'll do is, let's go to here. And this is Golden Vico's room, isn't it? Golden Vico, you, you've you been brilliant. You've been an exceptionally fabulous person. But now uh, you, you must leave this place. So, cheerio, you may leave. And we will keep an eye out on this little thing here. To, um, to see if anyone comes in that is a bard that might do well with the nobles. Oh, we've run out of a few things. We seem to have run out of ale, which is unfortunate, and we have ran out of flour. Okay, right. Well, let's go and look for those two things. The ale is particularly important. We do need some of that around. So ale and flour. I think that's flour just there, isn't it? So let's see if someone over here can sell us some flour at a good price. And if we could buy some ale at the same time, that would be marvellous. But no, unfortunately not. This place looks pretty good. This place is pretty good. Average price is 50. They're charging 48. I will go for that. So we'll buy, I don't know, quite a bit of that. Do we need to stock up on anything else whilst we're here? Okay, the game has just popped up and told me that I don't have the proper equipment to store some of the resources. And we look into this little window. I don't have the proper equipment to store ale. Now, I'm fairly certain I should do, unless the barrel is full. So what's that got? That's a lager barrel. That is that is a wine barrel with not that much wine in, let's be honest. That is that cider. Okay. So that one there is that is also lager. So that little one is cider. Okay, where are we? Okay, right, you might be right then, game. Okay, but where did I store the previous stuff? Um also these things here, these did have drinking once upon a time. We had to put them there for um for the chap, uh, what was he called? Two Fish Alstero. He wanted some drink in his room, didn't we? And then I couldn't figure out how to move it down the stairs. But some people in the comments have said that what we can do is, if we want to move them about, we can click on them in here. And then what I was having prob problems with, with when you go to here and then you go down a floor, it deselects the barrel. But apparently we can click on that and then press page down and I have retained the barrel. Oh, that's marvellous. Thank you, commenting people. That is, that's excellent. That's very good. Right, let's move those barrels downstairs to where they should belong. Okay, so what I've done is we've got ourselves a wine barrel Mark II, which is very exciting. And I know it's a wine barrel, but we can store all these other things in it, including, weird enough, fish. <laughs> store fish in your wine barrel if you so want to. But we will not do that because that's weird. We will, however, store ale in the wine barrel. So that's very good. And the reason for having it in this wine barrel is that it is very fast to use so it's a little bit kind of uh, potentially a uh, fire hazard that's fine and it might fall apart a little bit easier than uh, other ones but it's very quick to use that is very very handy indeed so we can stick some ale into there hopefully they will get a lot of ale in there that could be very very handy and then we do need to look at getting other fancy drinks on the menu now i don't know if we can have other fancy drinks that we have not yet discovered so have we got anything left that we haven't actually got on the menu already. So yeah, this Kvass stuff, is that fancy? No, that's that's favoured by the baddies. 
by the outlaws. Roasted grain drink is traveling folk. Mug of ale should already be on the thing. But again, look, that's that's for the these traveling sort of folks. And we don't really want that on there. We don't want them in. So at some point, we are going to have to start removing those from the menu. But that will mean that we take a hit to our profits. It's a it's a terrible balancing act. Um, however, we have ordered a load of other stuff. Oh, now we need to go and order some berries for the deer haunch. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, I think it's going to be a good idea to try and spread our influence around a little bit more. We've got 59 blue scrolls. I sent out a few town criers just to a few random places just to try and increase influence the littlest amount in a few places. So well, what about over here? Can we go over here yet? No, we can't do that. We Oh, one of our people is ill, however. Hang on, let's send you to the doctors next door. Tonina, go to the doctors, please. Get well soon. Thanks. Um, Happy village. We can't do anything there either. I mean, could we just... Could we just buy the influence with you guys just to the point where we can get a trade route with you or something like that? I don't know. What does that mean? What does that let us do? Does that mean we can go and pick up that item? I don't really know what that means. That might have been a way to some scrolls, but never mind. Right, what about this place down here? Gambetta. Ah, hang on. We can go and grab the item. We haven't got enough influence to actually trade with them. Uh, but we could probably sort that out by doing that. So, yay, there we go. So now we could go here and grab fancy bed one. Eduardo, away. Go and grab fancy bed one, please. And can we do this? A thousand. Oh, yeah, that's quite reasonable. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll grab that for a thousand. Okay, so now I've got a trade route with them, and that's good. So that's a nice, stable thing. I don't know what the rest of these things mean. What does that mean? Does that mean that people come to our place from here? I'm not entirely sure. And there's a barrel at the end. What does the barrel mean? I don't know what the barrel means either. The Nutty Bakery sounds brilliant. Um, oh, let's send someone over to get some leek soup because why not? They're not doing anything else. And then this place here, or Tellio, um, let's spend a scroll or two there. Yeah, again, I don't know what that thing means. We've got a sort of a hand with money in it. Um, can we can we do this? 1500 that's quite expensive. That is quite expensive. I wouldn't mind getting this thing. Can we get this vase in, please? That'd be nice. Can we do that, look? And now can we go and grab that vase? No, we can't, unfortunately. We can open up a trade route. Okay, we'll do that for 800. Okay, that opens up all these other things. Good rum. Oh, crikey. Bell Fonsul, obviously. Right, can we now go and grab the item? No, unfortunately not. We still can't. It's Where is the item one? See, which one is the item? It, it doesn't look like any of these things. I thought it might be one of those. But, um... Okay, let's use another one of those. It's gone past that hand with coin. Does that mean we can have this item? No. I don't really know what that means. Maybe that means we get better deals on, on trade or something. I'm not entirely sure. Let's look up here. So, Cricot. Can we get a trade route with them? Oh, oh, we really can. Okay, right. Have we, we kind of got a trade route with them already, though, can we? 2005. Ah, ha, That's why it's very expensive. It's really expensive. Okay, so can we grab any more items? Can we grab anything else? Like, we can't grab anything from up there. No. So we'll start that off. We'll, we'll do that. And then we'll go and get some town criering happening. Oh. Oh, look. That sends, that sends nobles. Let's do that for 540. That's relatively expensive. But that does send nobles our way. Um, what can we do up here? Sonberg. Um, do you send nobles as well? That was that. I've never seen nobles being sent to that. Yes, for 490. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's try and get some nobles back in. Let's see if we can increase that amount. Um, and then, yeah, we still need to go and do some stuff with the inn as well. So what I might do is, what I might do is, we've not really got much on the walls. We've not got that much on the walls. So what we could do right now, let's go to here. Let's just hang a few of these round. Just some lovely blue things. Just because we can... And they fit on the walls. And they're only 150. They're relatively cheap. So we'll put one there and one there. So that is already attracting the nobles. So that's got to be a good thing. And then we'll put some green. We'll put a green one here. Because green green goes just there quite nicely. Look at that. Yay. Brilliant. And we'll put another one on the other side. So flip that round. So I think it's about there. Um, and then... I was going to say we should invest in a painting, but I don't think we should because it would leave us a little bit bankrupt. Um, let's get a hunter's trophy and then we'll pop that. Um, I don't know. Should we have? I'd like one either side of the door, but that would be 600 and that would leave us with not much money. We'll put one there for now. Now, again, this room is going to be very much tailored toward the um, the townsfolk, isn't it? You people. 
because of the tables and chairs that we've got over here. We could do with some fancier tables and chairs that the nobles like, which is why I'm trying to go around the map, trying to go around here and just try and pick up all these items and open up all the trade routes and all that kind of stuff. Because somewhere along here, there's going to be like really nice tables and chairs that the nobles are going to want, but we just haven't got there yet. Okay, someone called Winton is visiting the inn and they are allegedly, so the game has told me, a famous bard. Is it you? Okay, are you posh? Oh no, you're you're a scallywag. Oh, that's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, you're one of the outlaws. Yeah, we definitely don't want you. We want a bard that appeals to the nobles. Now, I don't know who that's going to be, but yeah, we really need one of them in. I mean, our nobles are 15.8. It's creeping up. We've got people over here. I assume you are Sears. I assume you are Sears saying, hello, can we have a room, please? Yeah, do you have a bed to rent? Um, nobles are always welcome. Name to are always welcome. Yeah, you can just sort of lurk around. Okay, and then you're probably going to do the same as well. So yes, okay, um, you can lurk around too. Yeah, I can't promise. I can't promise anything. Also, they added in a whole extra load of town and I've not noticed. I always knew that this bit was here. I always knew that this little sort of fort was here near our, near our tavern. I didn't kind of realise there was a whole extra town bit in. There's all sorts of buildings and things. Oh, I was going to say we can go right in, but we can't. There's a little sort of stall just there. Some other buildings, houses, a cart, another stall, a windmill. Has that always been there? <laughs> Have I just been so unobservant that I've never noticed? Or has that been added in in a recent patch? I'm, I'm not entirely sure now. Oh, that's good. We can go and get ourselves a stuffed pork dish that the nobles will also like. So, okay, Morgan, go and grab that because I think I sent Gwynfor to go and pick up another one. So that's quite good. So at least we've got that going for this place. Yeah, we've kind of almost got to the top of the, whatever these things are, of this place. Yeah, I don't really know what all these things mean. It's not entirely clear what a hammer and nails means or a big star means or anything like that. I don't really know what's going on with those. But yeah, we can't go and get stuff from here. So if we go to there, we can't go and get that stag head. That's a bit of a shame. And we can't go and get some other bits and bobs. It would be nice if we go and grab these. Do you know what we should do? What we should do is we should open up this trade route here. So let's spend quite a bit of money. So we'll go, okay, fine. We'll open that trade route up there. That lets us see over here, Lord Gallant. Ooh, okay, what can we get from you? Fish waffles. The street food of many is Sambrian port. Isn't this place really far away from Sambria? Is it across the other side of the world? Um, okay, right, we don't need to go and grab that right now, but it's gone and got all these other things as well. Ah, oh, it's not got any items. I want to go and grab items. Ah, but we can go get Fancy Bed 1. Um, okay, Eduardo, go and grab Fancy Bed 1, please. And you know what? I think we shall call it a part four now. And this part has been quite refreshing, if I'm completely honest, because we've been back doing the tavern management sort of stuff. So we've been looking at expanding the rooms and we've changed some of the rooms out to make them nicer rooms so the nobles want to go in them. And we've been doing other bits and bobs as well. We've added stuff onto the menu and we've put some new decor around the place. And it's been more sort of tavern management-y because the last three or four parts, I think, have been quite sort of heavily plot-based. They've been around the story and there's been characters coming in and lots of stuff to read out and decisions to make and the plot moving on. So it's been quite refreshing to come back to a relatively peaceful part where we can just go back and just potter about the tavern and have a little look around and all that kind of stuff. I do think, however, that we may well need to go to a bank. We might just go to a bank. We'll just pick one at random. I don't know, the nearest one. We'll go to a bank. We'll take out the maximum loan we can. So we just take out a great big pile of cash and we shall expand the tavern to a third floor, I think. I think we might need a third floor to get some more of these rooms in. So essentially what we do is we will mirror what is already here. So we shall have this setup kind of. I mean, the stairs won't be in the same place, obviously, because we can't put the stairs above there. But uh, we can put the stairs somewhere along here. And then we'll have this sort of setup of rooms on the next floor, so on sort of uh, level two. Uh, but to do that, we need lots of money. I mean, it's going to cost a lot of money to just build, uh, sort of get the flooring in, just build the floors, let alone get all the stuff in the rooms. And they want the fancy beds and the fancy chests and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be very, very tricky to get all that in. And then we want to do all the decor as well. We want to get lots of the decor done. So we're going to need to spend some money on that. And we want to try and expand our influence to lots of places so we can pick up all the fancy items and hopefully get stuff the nobles are going to like. So, um, so yeah, we might need a little cash injection because money is, I mean, it's coming in. 
and it's fine. It's okay. We are making money. We're not losing money, but it comes in relatively slowly. So I would like to speed it up a bit. So we may need to take out a little bit of a loan, but it's fine because we know now that you can just pay them back by taking a loan from another bank and then just sort of keeping that process sort of rolling around for a bit. So it'll all be fine. I'm sure it'll all be fine, but we'll have a look at doing all that stuff next time because we'll finish up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be very, very marvelous indeed. And also if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Crossroads Inn. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Yes, in your face, in your face hats. I didn't even know what was going on there. There was blood and rain and doom. Fall on my head hat. I have no hat. <laughs> Rectify this matter, okay? Wrong. That was a car. It's happening again, keep it together. Ah, oh, no!